Mic check. Hello, hello. All right, all right. We got it fixed. We got it fixed, guys. Awesome, awesome. We've got 23 people already in here. It's amazing to have you guys in here. We're going to talk about some awesome stuff in this live stream. We got the chat pouring in. Everybody's talking. Thank you to everybody who's in here right now, guys. I'm going to let a little bit more people come in before we get started. But yeah, appreciate you guys a bunch. Today's been a really good day. Just been grinding. Yo, what's up, Steven? What's up, Victor? What's up, Michael? What's up, Khalid? Oh, man. It's good to see all you guys in here. Appreciate every single one of you. Yeah, I like doing this YouTube live. I usually do the lives over on Facebook, but this YouTube live is cool for sure. So, guys, we're going to talk about a lot in this live stream. First and foremost, we're going to go in depth to some of my subscribers' stores. I've taken about five of the messages that I received. I got a good amount of them, so I took five of the stores that I thought needed some adjustment and needed some work, and we're going to be diving in, in depth, going through those stores, and I'm going to be sharing with those people what they need to fix, and I figured it would be best to do this live so that everybody can get value out of it, not just the people who are getting help from me directly. So we got about 28 people in here. I'm just going to go right into it, and uh, I'm using this software for the first time, so hopefully everything works. I'm going to switch over. Um, you guys should be able to see my screen. Let me know if you guys can see the screen. Everything looks good. And once I get that confirmation, we will go right into this next step. So somebody just let me know if everything's good, and we'll be good to go. I think you guys can see it, but... What's up, Rob? What's up, uh, Pulsa Happiness? Y'all don't have your real names on here, so I'm going to just call you whatever it is on uh, YouTube. What's up, Douglas? What's up, Jamal? Happy to have you guys all here. All right, cool. So let's scroll up to the top. This is the document that I put together for this. So you can see that we have five stores that I'm going to be reviewing, and then I'm also going to be dropping some notes about them. And then we're going to go and talk about some key points on how to stay ahead of the competition with Shopify dropshipping because there has been a lot of information out there. People saying, oh, it's dead. We're at the end of it. This is the last leg of it when I got some good information to share for you guys to make your mind a little bit at ease. And we're going to wrap everything up with a Q&A session where you guys can ask me anything about Shopify, Facebook ads, or entrepreneurship. But Let's get right into it, guys. I'm really excited. Let me just check again, see how many people we got in here. Awesome, man. We got 50 people in here. This is about to be live. So the first store that we have to look at is the freerangestore.com. I'm not going to be sharing the name of the people who share their store with me for obvious reasons. Um, I just don't want to do that. So we're just going to be talking about the stores themselves. And hopefully the people who sent me their stores are going to be going back and watching the replay or they're here in this live right now. So I literally haven't even gone through these stores. I looked at them briefly, but I haven't gone through and figured everything out yet about what I'm going to say. So I'm going to look through it a little bit now and see what pops out. Okay, wow. <laughs> so right out of the gate, I can tell this person that you have nothing on your store that makes it stand out. This store is extremely basic and the customer will likely come to the store and think it's not a legit business for a couple reasons. Here are some of the things that come to mind. First and foremost, you have no logo at all. This It's literally just the text of the name of your brand. And while this is okay sometimes, when you're trying to build a general store, it's really important that you stand out and you provide the customer a good experience with your store. And to stand out, having good branding is an easy way to do that. So for you running a general store, it's kind of crucial that you have a good logo. Logos are easy to make, guys. You can do it on Canva. You can do it on Photoshop. And if you are lazy and don't want to pick up the skill set, just hire somebody on Fiverr for five to 10 bucks and you'll get an awesome logo. So the next thing I want to talk about is this header section that you have on your site. It is very basic. I'm not going to lie. It looks like you set this site up in five minutes, maybe even less than that. And that's not in a disrespectful type of way. But guys, we're building a business here. You have to devote time into providing your customer with a quality experience. And this is far from that, unfortunately. So something I could suggest to you is maybe adding a slideshow with multiple images or putting an image that is a little bit more relatable to the brand or the story that you want to tell with your business. Now, the worst part of it all is that I don't know what that is, guys. Even on a general store, you want to have a story. You want to have something attached to your brand. 
other than just a name and some general products. That's how you stand out and that's how you can be ahead of the competition in terms of design and setting up your store. So that's just off the top alone. That's the main things that I'm seeing, but I was expecting to scroll down and see a lot more stuff, but the only thing that pops up is two products on this homepage, man. So when you set your store up, you don't have to go crazy on the homepage. You don't need a million products. That's not what I'm trying to say, but you need to make it as an authentic experience. Look at the top e-commerce stores. Look at Kylie Jenner store. Look at um, Tatley, another popular store. The way they set their stores up is, yes, they have a header, they have that setup, but they break it down, guys. They, they show the collections that they have to offer. They might show one of their best-selling products. Maybe they have a little customer review section. Maybe they have an image showing one of their featured products or something about their store telling a story. You have to add substance to your homepage. Granted, you're going to be sending customers directly from the Facebook ad to the product page. It is crucial that you still take the time to design and build a high quality store so that you can get trust in the eyes of your customer. If I was a customer, I would not purchase from this site. And that is a policy that I like to follow when I'm designing my Shopify stores. After designing it, if I look it over and I say, I would be interested in purchasing from this store, that's when I feel content with moving forward, with progressing with that product. But that's just kind of about the homepage, man. You definitely gotta add some more stuff here. And these things at the bottom here, these are fine, these are important to have, but like a little example, you should you should maybe capitalize this or make it uh, make a little more sense, refunds and money back. That kind of doesn't make any sense. Maybe just change it to refund policy. It's really the little things that matter when it comes to store design that puts trust in the eyes of your customer. Okay, so I'll say a couple more things about this store and then I'll move on because unfortunately there isn't much to say. So like I said, I really think it's important that you have some type of story attached to your brand. So that's when you can enter an About Us page and you can talk about the things that you're trying to accomplish with your brand. So if you're running a general store, right, you might be thinking, well, I don't have a story. This isn't a brand. It's just a thing that I'm using to test products. Okay, well, you need to use your marketing logic and some critical thought to come up with something that achieves that effect. So it could be, we aim to provide you with the coolest and most innovative gadgets on the market. Boom, something like that. Something that stands out to the customer that is unique. This store does not have that whatsoever. So I'm gonna shop around and I'm gonna see if I can find anything else worth critiquing. So. You can see here, when I hit catalog, it just takes me to all the products. And as a shopper, you likely wanna bounce around and, and, and go to categories that fit into what you're trying to buy in. So for me, I mean, like this is all types of stuff, light bulbs, baby bows, cat rings, Darth Vader keychains. It's fine to have a bunch of different types of products, but it's crucial to segment those products into different categories to make things easier for your customer. So I'll keep looking through here. Another thing I'm gonna say, man, your product selection isn't necessarily that good. This was a really successful product for some people as well as this one. But as for the rest of these, I wouldn't go anywhere near these little cheap gadgets like these little cat rings and these keychains because they're very hard to make money with. Unless you're doing Instagram influencers, but even then it's, it's not the greatest. This product though, this product was one that had great success for a couple stores and I even made about $30,000 in sales off of it. So that was a good find, you know, but that's not the point of what I'm trying to say. This store is not trustworthy and I wouldn't trust this store to buy from. So real quick, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna sort it by the best sellers. I wanna see the best selling product on this store and I wanna see how he formatted the product page because the product page is a huge factor when talking about the success and setup of the store. So we're gonna put it on best selling here and it looks like a free plus shipping item was their best selling product. Okay, so this, this is unacceptable for the setup of your store. So there is nothing here about this product. It's not describing anything. It just has, is a one sentence setup with the material of the product and then the delivery setup. If you're going to sell a product, guys, to customers that have never heard of your store before, you really have to write good product descriptions. And if you're not good at copy, get better. Practice. Write text out just to learn. Like you need that skill set when launching a Shopify store. So 
this product page is very incomplete. You should add a, you should add much more about the product and say the benefits of it, why you're selling this product for free, you know, things like that, Nate, things of that nature. So I'm gonna look at one of the more expensive ones and go from there, but okay, yeah. So this product page is a little bit better because you're covering more angles, but I don't know. I feel like you just copied and pasted this after looking at everything else on the store. And also, I probably wouldn't put this like front and center um, and this too. So the design of this store needs a lot of work. And I hope the tips that I provided you were able to help you out. But we're going to move on to another store because this one is on the lower end and you really got to work on this. But I hope I was able to help you out. Real quick though, let's see. Um, okay, we got, we got 70 people in here. That is awesome. Good to uh, see you guys all piling in here. Let's see what the comments are looking like. Um, a lot of questions, but, uh, we're going to get to the questions a little bit later, guys. Thanks to everybody who's joining in. I appreciate all of you. We're going to keep going through the stores and we're going to keep looking for, uh, tips to share with these people. So free range store, man, you, you need a lot of work. Get back to the drawing board and take the tips that I gave you to heart and get working on them. So off or of the day items is the next store on the list. So this store once again, there is no logo on this store. I really can't stress this enough, guys. It's very important to have a good logo, and it's quick to do. It's not difficult to set up. You can pay somebody to do it or just do it yourself. The header of this website is a little bit better because it has products, and maybe those are the type of products that they sell in their store. Let's see if it's like phone cases. And, yeah, phone cases. So I guess that is a little bit better, but you should definitely fill in that middle text with something that is more engaging to the audience or the type of product that you're selling. So say something along the lines of, we provide the best phone cases on the market or we want to bring you the most unique phone cases on the market. Like whatever it may be for you, that's for you to sit down and think about and figure out for yourself. But definitely optimize this a little bit better. Work on a logo and set up the header to where it's a little bit more engaging for your customer. So we're gonna keep scrolling now. There is an about us right out of the gate. Of the day items, aspires to give you the best items for best prices. See, this is good. This is what I like to see. Something like this, right out of the gate, you share your mission, you share what you're trying to do with this business, and your customer will appreciate that for sure. I might word it a little different than about us, but you know that that's a good concept for you to get set up, most definitely. If you look at the uh, featured collections that they put here, I also think that's a good idea as well. So that way your customer can go in and shop and look for exactly what they want. So um, I'm not sure is the majority of the products that you're selling are phone cases, but if they are, that's fine to have this homepage of all phone cases. But I want to look around a little bit more because if you're selling things other than phone cases, then you probably shouldn't put, yeah, okay. So, wow. Okay, so look at this. There are tons of other collections, tons of other categories, and the only thing that you point out on your homepage is that you sell phone cases. That's going to be very misleading in the eyes of the customer. And if I was somebody shopping around for technology or for like an expensive gadget, I probably wouldn't trust this store because it only showcases one type of product. If you're going to have a general store, you need to frame your store as a general store. So that's really crucial to get set up. And if you're really struggling with sales, it might be because of the products that you're testing. These phone cases, while you may be able to find some cool designs that are really scalable, this stuff is much harder to sell through Facebook ads, guys, because these products don't solve a problem. These products don't have that wow factor. These products really don't add any convenience to the customer's life. The only thing that these products do is perhaps hit somebody on a certain angle when they see it. So a fisherman might see that and say, oh, fishing is my way of life and buy it. But unfortunately, you're not gonna really be pulling on their strings and hitting those key points that get customers to come to your store and buy your products. So I don't know what your best sellers are. Let's see, I have this tool here that allows me to sort. Some people have their best sellers hidden though, so let's see. Okay, see, so the best selling products on this store aren't even phone cases. So I'm not really 100% sure why you're setting up the whole store based off the phone cases. So that's something you definitely need to go in and fix. But 
let's dive into the product page and see what's going on with there but these are two great products that you found the pet niche is always hot if you can find unique and cool products to provide to that market the only thing that i would say about the pet niche is one you really have to get to it before other people do and not the niche the product itself because there are lots of big brands in that space that will jump on a product and scale it faster than you so if you're able to find something early in the competition you'll be good to go so this product, I've seen it a good amount of times. It sold a hot level of sales. Like they, they probably made at least six figures on this. Not this store in particular, but I've seen another store do it. So let's see what they got the uh, homepage set up. Yeah, so you definitely are going to need to add more stuff to your product description. So a couple things to consider when optimizing the product descriptions is first and foremost, set up some trust badges on the description. You can look online, go to Google and type in Shopify trust badge and put it at the top of your product description. Uh, some people will argue with me and say that trust badges aren't the best to put on your store, but I've split tested it a ton of times and the customers enjoy seeing the, the trust badges like nine times out of 10. My conversion rate without it was about a two and my conversion rate with it averages around four to five consistently. So. I like to keep trust badges on my store most definitely. Another thing that you should definitely add is reviews. If you don't have a review app on your store, you're really hurting yourself in terms of conversions because the customers want that social proof that your store is trustworthy. And guys, you don't need to get actual reviews from customers. You can just go to Amazon, find the exact same product, see what people are saying about the product and copy and paste those reviews over. So long as it's the same product, you're good to go. And make sure that the review doesn't say, got mine in two days or something like that because then you're gonna have a lot of frustrated customers. Another thing to consider adding to this product page is a little bit more text. I mean, you cover the, the bases here, but I would probably before the bullet points write a nice little paragraph about the product. Maybe hit that pain point of the customer like, don't you hate washing your pet's paws? Isn't it frustrating? Or don't you hate when the dog comes in and leaves a mud track? Whatever it may be, this product is the simple solution to that problem. And when the customer reads that, it's gonna hit them in the heart and they're gonna say, okay, maybe I do need this product in my life. It's really important that you guys develop marketing logic when launching these products because without it, it's going to be hard to come up with good copy. It's going to be hard to consider what products to test so marketing logic is real crucial when it comes to building a store in this space. So that kind of wraps up my review of this store there. The main things you need to add is adjust that uh, homepage to, to fit a little bit more about what you're doing with your company. You're selling all types of products. And also you can optimize these homepages a little bit better and you'll be good to go. Just keep testing products. So that's the second store we ran through there. Let's see what people are saying. What is that tool that you use to find best selling? Um, I don't even know the name of it. I downloaded it a very long time ago. It's called Shopify Product Revealer. You can just um, look it up and find it on the Google Chrome store. I think that's what it's called, the extension store. Anyways, guys, we got 80 people in here. You guys are awesome. And... Uh, thank you for coming in. Some people are saying they're getting sick of looking at stores. All right, well, I did say that's what we were going to do. So I'm gonna keep going through a couple of these stores. And after we go through the stores, guys, I'm gonna drop a little bit more value on you, so don't worry. So we're gonna go through one more Shopify store. Sorry to these other people, but we're gonna go through one more and then I'll move on to something else and we can come back to it at the end because I know you guys are probably getting tired of me going through these, but I figured it would provide a lot of value for those struggling with the setup of your store. Actually, let me know guys, do you want me to keep going through the stores or do you want me to move on to the next section of this live chat? Let me know. Oh, not getting sick of looking at stores. I meant how awful these look. All right, bro. Thanks for the uh, clarification. All right, cool. You guys are giving me the thumbs up. We're going to keep going through these stores. Thank you. All right, cool. So the next store that we're about to do is lazymonkeyu.com. Oh, um. I don't think it works. The link that uh, this person sent me to their store is not loading. So sorry to this person, but I'm not gonna be reviewing your store, unfortunately. So we're gonna be doing flowspace.com. This site looks like it's based around meditation, mindfulness, yoga, 
oh wow, I can win a special prize. I feel I feel incredible. No, I'm playing. But um, let's see what this store has to offer. So they they have the nice header that is in line with their brand, the uh, mindfulness, the serendipity, the peace. I like that. The logo looks great with the little lotus flowers. So so far so good. We'll keep scrolling and see what they have to offer. Treasures to bring peace and flow to your space. See, this is what I was talking about with those other stores, guys. You want to set up your site to favor your brand's image. So these people did a great job at that. So right out of the gate, you can see they have the home decor set up and it's all kind of related to their brand, which is relatively nice. So we'll keep going. They set up the featured product with the nice image, another featured product and another collection. All right. So this is awesome. They put a nice quote at the bottom too. Whoever did this, your homepage looks great. Good job. You don't really need to change anything there. Um, it's good to go. Great work. The only thing that I would suggest is perhaps putting an about us section so you can talk a little bit more about your brand and what you're trying to accomplish with that. I've said this for the past three stores, but it's really essential that you set that up because we track all the visits to our store and we see what pages the customers go to and we're getting thousands of visits every single day to my store so a lot of the customers over 30 percent of the customers navigate to the about us page and they read and see what the brand image is for your store so it's crucial to have that set up so we're going to go in here we're going to sort the best sellers and we're going to see what the um, product descriptions are looking like for this store because I remember this person telling me they weren't getting that many sales with it so let's see so they got the trust badge up top they have a decent long description talking about what the product does and the features are all there I would probably optimize this a little bit better perhaps putting the key points in bold and then writing a little blurb about it so solar powered and bold and then you can say we have built this with solar power technology to make sure that you never have to waste money on electricity something along those lines and for the next one like has seven colors you can say navigate through colors of blank 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 whatever the colors are but other than that I think this store looks really good and you definitely have potential to you know scale this store because you guys got to realize that the store is just the base for the product the store is not the thing that's going to take you from zero to a million in this in this general store business model what it, what that is going to be is the product itself so so long as you have a good store base to test products on over and over again once you find a winner you'll be good to go so my advice to you would be to continue testing products but if you're not finding success with this type of product with these type of mindfulness products then perhaps you should move on to something more more general so you can keep testing products and try to find something that works and once that sticks then you bring it over to a niche store and you go from there thank you for sharing your store with me hopefully you got some value from that so yeah guys that was three stores that we just reviewed and we'll see what some people are saying keep going everybody needs your help it'll be nice to see reviews man we got 80 people in here awesome guys thanks for joining i'm excited to have you all in here we're gonna keep going through this and uh i, I really appreciate you guys it's awesome to have you here so we got some more people joining what is your experience like yeah good point floris um i did i did notice that they don't have a um contact us page which is very crucial thank you for pointing that out you definitely need to contact us page on your store because your customers are going to be ordering from you and the shipping time if you're dropshipping from aliexpress is of course going to be at least a two-week time period so it's crucial that you have good customer service and i see that you have this button here but i would also implement a contact us page so they can talk about that so that wraps up the review of the stores i guess i didn't write any notes because we were just talking about it so we don't have to worry about that now i want to move into the next section of this live and i want to talk to you guys about the future of shopify drop shipping with facebook ads the future of e-commerce in general and how you can stay ahead of the curve because march from about march 10th till the end of the month I've seen crazy, crazy complaints and a lot of people really getting frustrated with the results that they've been getting. And I'm not talking just like the small players. I'm talking about the people who have been doing huge numbers consistently for the past couple of months. And I've been noticing this trend of people getting frustrated, sad, angry, 
And the thing is, you cannot get like that. This internet marketing space is always changing and always adapting. So if you plan on having a long-term future in this business model, it is crucial that you learn to keep a level head and just pay attention to the market and know what you need to do to stay ahead of the curve. So if you don't know what you need to do, that's exactly what we're about to talk about right now. And I'm gonna give you guys some insight after my experience and after networking with 100k plus entrepreneurs okay that made no sense entrepreneurs doing well over six figures a month just like myself some even doing close to six figures in a day i've got a good grasp of what the future is going to look like for facebook drop shipping and whatnot so let's get right into that i've taken down some bullet points here just so i can stay organized and not ramble because i do tend to do that so the first point that i want to highlight guys is that Dropshipping itself is just a business model. It's not going anywhere. The concept of selling products that you don't have in your hands and having those products be fulfilled by an alternative fulfillment center is never going to go away. Even Amazon does this indirectly. I mean, the people who sell on Amazon aren't always shipping products out of their house. They're shipping through Amazon's um, shipment centers. So dropshipping itself is never going away. Now, there are things that we use dropshipping as, such as dropshipping products from AliExpress with Facebook ads that are going to get more difficult in time, but you have to understand that if anybody ever tells you dropshipping is dead or Shopify is dead, they're lying to you. Sh Shopify is an e-commerce platform and dropshipping is simply an arbitrage model that has been around long before Facebook advertising. So if somebody's telling you that, they're trying to sell you something 100% of the time. So I just had to get that out of the way and clear the air on that. Do not worry about things being dead. Like I just said about the internet marketing space, guys, the only people who die in this space are the people who don't adapt and the people who don't consistently improve on what they're doing. Those people will most definitely die because this space keeps moving. And if you don't move along with it, guess where you stay? Right here. And then you fall behind and then you die. So that is kind of the perspective that you need to have with internet marketing. Just because something worked extremely well for you in the last couple of months doesn't mean that it's going to continue to work for you for the next three to five years. You have to pay attention to what's going on and continue to adapt and update your methods to what's working in the current point of time. The second point that I want to talk to you guys about is on a similar note. Facebook ads aren't going anywhere. So there's been a lot of news recently. Um, the, the big one was the, the Cambridge, uh, Cambridge Analytics scandal where there was a lot of third-party information that was not being handled properly by Facebook. And this made it to all the big media channels, CNN, Fox, whatever it may be. And um, a lot of people who saw this and got a big like fear in their heart like, oh no, everybody's going to leave Facebook. There was a trending hashtag of delete Facebook and everybody was jumping on this bandwagon of, oh, Facebook is Satan. It's the end of Facebook. Their stock price started to drop down and all this stuff. And everybody was looking at that like this might be the end for drop shipping. This might be the end for Facebook advertisers, as well as there was another announcement being made that Facebook no longer allows third party data targeting. So targeting specific purchase behaviors and things like this is no longer available on Facebook. And a lot of people got really worried by this. Guys, here's the thing. Facebook is always changing behind the scenes. Facebook is always doing things behind the scenes to improve the customer's experience. That is their job. Look, we look at this thing as an easy way to launch products and sell products. But look at Facebook, the multi-billion dollar company. Their main priority is not how can we cater to drop shippers? Their main priority is how can we make the people that are currently using Facebook the happiest possible? So of course they're going to do things to cater towards the users on their site. So we as advertisers cannot let an algorithm change or an announcement completely scare us off of using a platform. We need to use these announcements, take them and figure out how to adapt and change our business 
to effectively work with those type of changes. Now, I'm just kind of speaking in theory. I'm not giving you exact things that you need to do, but I had to get that out of the way because a lot of people really stress and worry about things that are out of their control. You can't go into the Facebook coding room and say, we need to make this change. They're going to do things that you have no control over, and that's just the way of it. So you need to focus on the things that you can control. And the things that you can control are finding good quality products, not shitty little trinkets and like cheap little phone cases like we were looking at before. Find good quality products that people are actually interested in so you can stand out. Create good quality advertisements that really are enticing and inviting to the customer. If you're just ripping infomercials from YouTube, you're never going to have long-term success. That is not the way that we should do this. You should really focus on creating quality content so you can provide your customer with a good experience. And lastly, I just said this, but you need to also be providing your customers with a good experience after they purchase the products. You can't just let them buy something and then never speak to them and never do customer service. You guys need to be nurturing the customers that you do get so they can continue to trust and buy from you even more than that first initial sale that you made. Because guys, there's more to this business than just making one initial sale off of these customers on the front end. You really want to focus on how you can optimize the back end of this funnel and get people to come back and purchase from you again and really appreciate your brand and the experience that you provided them. So look, Facebook ads are, I mean, I don't want to say they're never going away. I, I can't tell you the future, unfortunately, but Facebook is a giant in terms of social media. They are the most popular social media platform on the internet right now. And it would take some extreme circumstances for that entire platform to crumble and fall to nothing. Also consider that advertising is Facebook's number one source of revenue. So they're going to help us and continue to do things to allow advertisers to flourish and thrive. But we also, on our part, have to continue to provide a good experience in every single way that we can so we don't get banned, so you don't have pissed off customers reporting every single ad that they see, and ultimately, so you can be around for a long period of time. So that kind of wraps up how I feel about Facebook ads. I'm gonna be using Facebook ads for as long as I can for the next couple of years. They're not going anywhere. You just have to learn how to stay ahead and continue to provide a good experience to the customers and the people that want to purchase your products. So that was kind of my rant about those two things. And I have some more points that I want to cover. But first, I want to jump into this comments and see what some people are saying. So um, let's see what we're saying. People are saying, um, one more, you missed my store. Okay, I, I, I'll go through your store, bro. Don't worry. I, I'll go through it when I uh, get, back to the, get back to the end after this. Um, hey, Jordan, do you still use Count Durant Timer on your hot products? Um, no, I'm not using countdown timers, but um, I'm going to answer questions as I get to the end here. So we're going to keep going through the next two points that I want to make about the future of this and how you can stay ahead. But what I just covered was very important and you guys really need to take that in and, and really think about it moving forward. So now I want to talk about the real value of a general store because a lot of people are putting all their eggs into this one basket. And I got to tell you guys, it's not really the best strategy to approach this with. So a general store. A general store is incredibly powerful for a couple of reasons. First off, it allows you to test as many products as you want in as many niches as you want for as long as you want. There is no real limitations to it as opposed to in a niche store that is highly specific. Now, you guys already know this. This is not new information. But let me tell you how I look at the, the general store and how a lot of the other big players in this e-com space are looking at general stores. The general store is just a jumping point. You use your general store to test products and go through products until you find something that sticks. And when you find the product that sticks, you scale that product and get the money that you can out of it. But what you can also use it for is validating a niche. So if you find a product that is working on your general store, that can be a sign, and it typically is, to go into that product with a niche store. You take that product, you bring it over to a niche, 
and you build more products or find more products in that space and you scale it that way. This is a really successful strategy that's working for a lot of people. And once you get over to that niche store, you have the long-term potential for branding and building something that's gonna be lasting longer than just this short-term general store that you have. Something where you can build a strong customer list, you can provide them a good experience and retarget and, and, and do good email marketing to build a relationship with those customers. So the real value of a general store, I'll break it down in three points. One, it's a great way to test products and validate niches. Once you find something that is validated, take it over to a niche store and scale that out. Two, it is an incredible way to generate cash flow for your future business ventures. For me, that is almost the main reason why I'm doing it because I've told you guys my story before. I didn't start with a huge budget, but now after running this general store for almost a year, I've been able to develop a decent amount of capital to fund my other ventures and things that I want to do, which is huge. Money is simply a tool to invest in other opportunities so you can have room for explosive growth. And the last thing that a general store is valuable for is developing all of the skills that you need to run any type of e-commerce business. So look guys, I'm gonna be transparent with you. When we scaled our first two winners on the general store, there was a lot of mistakes made. We had over 1,000 orders that needed to be fulfilled for a long period of time, tons of frustrated customers. We had issues with suppliers. We had issues with payment processors, with PayPal, chargebacks. Every problem that you could think of, I've sort of gone through with this general store. But guess what? Now, when I take the time to set up my niche store, I know what is going to be expected and I know what problems I can expect to face when growing that business. So it's like, since I went through the trial of going through this general store, doing what I had to do, failing, once I launched this niche store, I know exactly what I can expect and I can be prepared for these situations before they even occur. General stores are incredibly valuable, but you have to look at them for what they are, not as something that is a long-term business. And this point touches on the exact same thing that I was just saying. Testing random products on a general store, guys, is not a business. It, it, it simply isn't. You should treat it like you're building a real business. Of course, you should provide a good customer experience. You should provide a good website and all of this stuff. But testing random products on a general store is not really a business. It will give you all the skills you need to run an actual business. It will allow you to generate a good amount of money, but that doesn't make it a long-term business. So you have to understand that and do not put all your eggs into your one general store basket because unfortunately, you have winning products, you scale them, they go all the way up, you're on cloud nine, you're making all this money, and then the products die off and you go back to zero dollars or low, low sales. It happens to me, it happens to everybody. So that is why you cannot go all in on the general store. Focus heavily on your general stores. Make a bunch of money on your general stores, but understand in two to three years, it's not likely that your general store is still gonna be pushing successful ads through Facebook. So guys, your next question may be, what is the key to long-term success in this business? How can you build something that is going to last for the next five to 10 years in the e-commerce space? And the answer is incredibly simple, branding. Branding is key. So it is a little more complicated than just those three words, but at its core, that is how you build something that lasts for a long period of time. You start a general store, you test a bunch of products, you fail, you learn all the skills that you need, you find something that works, you bring it over to a niche store, you implement the skills that you've learned from your general store, you use the cash that you've earned from your general store, and you scale that niche store into something that is branded and has a quality experience for your customers. And what you're gonna see is that that is what has the potential to stick around and last for the next couple of years because you're going to be providing your customers a good experience, you're going to be building email lists, creating relationships with your customers, and you're going to be providing them products that they want to buy. And that is how you stick around and stay in this space for a long period of time. If you don't do that, 
you're going to fall off. That is exactly what I just said. Your winner, let's say you're making five to 15K a day right now. Congratulations, good job, you, you found the first hurdle. But unfortunately, your winner is not gonna be kicking strong in the next year. Hopefully it will. I'm not trying to wish bad luck on those people, but I'm just being realistic with you. It's likely going to die off. So how can you stay ahead of that and not allow that to happen to you? Branding, creating something that is good and allows the customers to have a good experience is the only way that you're going to be able to stay afloat in this market. You can make a bunch of money without it, but if you wanna have longevity, it is the key and you need to set it up. So guys, that is really my rundown of how you can stay ahead of the competition and have something that lasts just longer than a fly-by-night store that makes you a good amount of money. I love general stores. I advocate heavily for launching a general store. Everybody should launch a general store, but just don't put all your eggs into that basket and understand that if you want to be around for years to come, you have to do more. Hope you guys got some value from that. We're going to hop back into the comments and I'm going to see what you guys are saying. But after we ran through that, guys, I got one more story because my boy uh, Flores, uh, uh, he wanted me to look at his store. So I'm going to check it out. And then we're going to go into the Q&A session. I'm going to kick it with you guys for like 20 minutes. We'll chill. We'll have a good time. Answer some questions. And yeah. So let's see what the comments are looking like. But um, okay, it's all questions. <laughs> so um, we will definitely set up the, uh, the Q&A very shortly. Let, one sec. Let me see. Um, Hey, Flores, bro, what is the link to your store? Just just let me know. Just drop it in the, or, yeah, just drop it in the chat, I guess, because people are going to see it regardless. So just let me know. Can you give a real world example of making, yes, okay. So here, here you go, right here. This is a real world example of an AliExpress product becoming a long-term brand. This company is not going anywhere. This has, they have taken this little product. Watch, you can find the exact same product in AliExpress. They have taken this little product into something that's gonna be around for literally years to come. Like, I, they've, they've got this market held down. Uh, we'll see if we can find it. Okay, well, it's this, it's this product here, but they've taken it, they've branded it, they've made it unique, and they've made it their own. And they're gonna stick around, and they're gonna be around for a long period of time because they innovated and they did that next step. So that's a perfect example of one. Another one you could look at is um, flawless hair removal. This thing's in freaking Walmart, and initially people were selling this on um, Facebook ads on AliExpress, and this product is taking over. Like, I'm sure you guys have seen this. They do infomercials for this product now. It's completely taken over. So you, there really is opportunity to take it to that next level, guys. You just need to test on your general store, find a good product, and then brand it and bring it out to that next phase. Anyways, let's see what his store link is. Um... Oh, okay. Store is number five on the thing. Um, no, nah, it's not Dan's store. Dan owns um, Vivir or Viver, Viver Smiles. But um, let's see, number five. Oh, GDG Trends. All right, let's see what we got here. My boy wants me to look at his store, so I'll check it out. All right, so um, you should definitely set up a header first and foremost, just to introduce your customers and welcome to your store. It's like a it's like a welcome mat when you walk into somebody's house. Like you look at it, you're like, oh, okay, I'm home, you know. But the collection list that you have is good. You have nice, high quality pictures. It looks nice for sure. Um, you've got the essential pages that you need: shipping, return, terms, and privacy policy. You should definitely set up an about us page. I'm not gonna explain why. I've already done that like four times. <laughs> But you should definitely get that set up. And perhaps you should add a little bit more to your homepage, such as a featured product or, like I said, the header. Or maybe you can add a little bit of a brand story to include in there. But so far, so good. You've got high-quality images, nice collection set up. So good stuff there. We're going to go to your best sellers and see what pops up here. I also recommend if you have a product that you've scaled really high, you don't publicly display it as your best seller because then another drop shipper like myself can just come in and take your product and run off with it so um it's looking like there's no option to sort by best selling so we'll see if i can do this ah you're smart guy smart guy all right so we're just going to jump into one of these product pages and see what we got here okay so you got the nice little upsell right there free shipping um 
yeah, this looks quite nice with the frequently bought together. I would definitely say fill this in with some reviews, but yeah, man, th this is a really nice looking product page. One suggestion that I can make to you is that you add some breaks. So just like do a little bit of spacing in between these, these sentences so it's easier to read on the customer. But yeah, it actually looks quite nice. You have the sale, you have the, the star ratings, you have the trust badge along with the special offer, and you have a good description explaining the product, sharing the features, and some nice images. So I'll check out another product and we'll see if we can find anything else that I can share. But to be honest, bro, this is a nice looking store. I don't think you'll have any troubles scaling a product using this store as your base. I think the only thing that you're really struggling with is the product selection itself. So just keep testing and keep looking for products. So it's looking like you're running with the same setup for every single product page, which looks great. So yeah, bro, I really don't have much to stay. You've got the currency converter, you've got the reviews, you've got nice product descriptions. You're good to go. Just keep testing products and keep implementing the strategies that I share and improving upon what you're doing and you will eventually find success, man. So good stuff there. All right, guys, so now I'm going to switch the view over to my face and we're gonna do some live q and a i'm excited to answer your guys questions so let's see if this works transfer it over to here yo all right so hit me with some questions guys like i said i'm gonna chill with you for about 15 20 minutes and uh we can we can answer some questions all right so actually there has been a lot of questions asked so i'm just gonna go ahead and scroll through the questions um the first question that i'm seeing is from kennedy williams and he says, can you break down what you mean by what's going on in the current world? Is that like Google Trends news? So what he's talking about is a post that I made earlier in my Facebook group. And in my Facebook group, I talked about or I shared a screenshot of a product that I've been having real good success with recently. I just launched it um, yesterday. And one of the key points that I mentioned of how I was able to find success with this product in a short period of time is that... I I put together some critical thought before I launched the product. I didn't just randomly launch it. I launched it based off of the market and what was going on. So obviously I can't tell you guys too many details because that's like throwing some meat in a pool of sharks. <laughs> you guys will jump on my product and run with it. But I'll give you a little bit of rundown of how I found it. So my friends and all the people around me, they're all really big into gaming and YouTube, like Twitch streaming and all this type of stuff. And I noticed a really popular trend within that space. There was something going on in that space that everybody was jumping on, everybody was doing, and they were going on to that type of thing. So me as a marketer and as a seller online, I wanted to see if there was any gaps within that market because it's really hot right now, it's really popular. How is there an opportunity for me to make some money off of this hot trend? So all I did was I went on AliExpress and I did some research for products within that space that fit the criteria that I was looking for. I found a product that did exactly what I was describing. I tested it and I had good success. So like I said, it's really kind of hard for me to explain to you exactly what I did to find that product. But there's really no other way to word it than the way that I worded it in my uh, text. It's that you need to pay close attention to what's going on in the market and see what people are saying and see what people are buying. Like, okay, I'll give you guys, I'll literally give you guys an example of a niche that I'm considering going into. Look, it's gardening season. It's spring. Summer's coming right up. Gardening, barbecue products? Come on now. Those are the type of things that you need to be looking into because that season is approaching. So look guys, I've literally given you a niche based off of what I just said. And how did I come up with that? Well, I just said it. It's spring season. It's gardening season. It's that time of year. So when August, September, December rolls around, that's when you come in and you say, hey, it's winter season. I need to look for products that, that fit in that type of year. So you go off of the basis of that. You see what time of year it is. You see what's going on on the internet. You pay attention to what's going on and you hop on those trends and see how you can implement there. Hopefully that was able to help you. I really wish I could share my successful products with you guys, but I just can't do that. <laughs> Eventually I will though. Once I get this store to a certain level, 
I'm gonna do like a full case study. I'm gonna be one of the only people who goes in and shows you guys the exact stores, the ad campaigns, everything that I did. But hey guys, more questions, let's see them. Anything that you wanna know about Facebook ads, e-commerce, Shopify, Jordan Welch, um, I don't know, let, let me know. <laughs> I'll answer some of the questions. What are some of the more uncommon apps that you're using in your stores? Um, I use one app called um, Disable Right Click, Disable Products, or uh, Best Selling Products. I like to use that so people can't come in and steal my products. But um, yeah, that, I don't. there aren't that really many that are uncommon. I made a YouTube video about the apps that I use and that is literally all the apps that I have in my store. So just go watch that video and you'll get your answers that you need. How many ad sets are you running? It really depends, man. It depends on how many I can launch for the product. Um, I never launch less than 10 ad sets for the product. So usually we'll do 10 to 20. 20 is around the usual max. And on this new product that I'm testing, I did um, 10 ad sets to the US and 10 ad sets worldwide. And they're targeting the same audiences. So 20 in that case. But 10 to 20 is all you need. You can do less if you're on a low budget. But the more ad sets you launch, the higher chance you have to succeed. Just, I mean, based off of the fact that you're showing your ad to more people that may potentially be interested in it, yeah. Um, launching ads at 12, question mark. Theory behind that? Yeah, um, I don't really care about the low budget ads. I don't care about launching those before 12 because Facebook is going to spend the money on those regardless since it's not that high of a budget. But if I'm launching a 100 to $3,000 budget ad set, I'm going to schedule it for 12 a.m. just because it allows Facebook to have that full 24-hour window to spend your money effectively. If you launch the ad at 6 p.m., what's going to happen is Facebook is going to rush through the spending and it's gonna end up spending not evenly or balanced and it's not gonna be the best for the optimization of your ad. So it's really crucial that you launch those big budget ad sets at midnight so Facebook has the full day to go through and spend. Oh, my boy Vitaly's in here. What's up, bro? Uh, let's see. Do you know about Facebook lowering your algorithm score when a Facebook ads payment fails or you delete comments? Okay, so yes, your ad account does get penalized when you have a payment fail, but if you only had like three payment fails, like don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. If you have like a hundred, you should probably just switch ad accounts and that will solve your problem. And technically it does hurt your score as well if you delete comments, but I delete comments frequently and I don't really have an issue, but mainly I just hide the comments. And you can use um, certain keywords on your store with the page moderation section, like AliExpress, Amazon, cheap, fuck these people, whatever it may be. But um, you can use those words and you can have them be blocked out. So anytime somebody comments those words, it gets immediately hidden. Um, what's the most successful niche that you sold in? Come on now, bro. Come on now, bro. You know, you know I can't do that. All right. Um, do you have any tips to what to put? You know what? I will tell you the most successful niche that I've sold in. Hey, look, everybody likes to hide this stuff. I'll, I'll just come out front and I'll tell you guys. Okay. So the most successful niche that I sold in was the home and kitchen niche. I found a really unique product in that space that nobody else was selling. I got the product in hand. I created an advertisement for that product. And that was my most successful product that I ever sold, ever. And um, I, I, I'm able to tell you guys the niche, but I can't tell you the product. I'll tell you a couple more things, though. It was a women-dominated product. The only people who were interested in the product was women, and it was an incredibly broad product that every woman could use and buy. And I had great success with that product. I was doing 15K days with that product for like two weeks straight. So that product was big money. So there you go. Home and kitchen, big market. Ladies love to have, old ladies love to have new stuff in their kitchen to make their life easier. I mean, shit, even I got the, the pineapple core and the bottle popper. So, hey, if you got things that can make people's kitchens eat or kitch cooking life easier, you usually be good to go. All right, so, ding, he just got a sale. Yeah, I did get a sale. But uh, what's your CPM on ad sets in the USA? Well, on this product, it's like below... Ten dollars, so it's pretty good, but um, that's not like the normal. It really depends. It depends on what ad you're tar or what audience you're targeting, the product, the relevance score, etc. 
What's your favorite way of finding the winning products? Do you still use ad sector? If so, what's your method of spying? Do you sort by comments like shares? What's keywords you use? Okay, so I have a few ways that I'm using products. Um, I've, I've been having good success using Amazon to find products, same as eBay. eBay is really powerful. On top of that, I do use Facebook feeds and ad sector a lot, but I stopped using ad sector and I actually got this new tool called Dropship Spy. It's not available, or no, not Dropship Spy. It's called, um, I think it's like Genius Shop or Shop Genius, something like that. Uh, I just started using it and I don't even think it's available to the, the public yet. I got the company, they emailed me, they asked me if I wanted to try it, so I tried it out. But once it's available, I will um, let you guys know on my Facebook group how you can get it for yourself and get set up with that. Um, let's see, let's see. Should I look into Google Shopping or continue to find winning products using Facebook? So. What I like to use Google Shopping for, and I've seen a couple people asking about Google AdWords. My good friend Steven shared this strategy with me, and it works really well. So what I do is I take the um, Google Shopping, and oh, that made no sense. I take my winning products that are working on my store that I've already validated through Facebook ads, and after I find the product is already working and successful, then I bring it over to my Google AdWords account. I do a little bit of keyword research and I find what's working for that specific product. And Google Shopping does like five to 10% of revenue for us. So nothing too crazy, but we're being able to pull in at least an extra 5K a month in sales. So not too bad at all. Um, are you going to AWE in Barcelona? I don't know what that is, but I think it's like Affiliate World something. That would be cool. I've never been to Barcelona before, so maybe. I don't know. I'm about to do a lot of cool stuff this year, hopefully. So uh, let's see. Do you still use crop YouTube videos to advertise products and ads? Yes, I do 100%. And once I find the product is working, I film it and I make my own video just because I don't want my ad account to get banned. That would suck. Um, Affiliate World Europe. Oh yeah, um, I watched all the live streams for that last year. I went uh, for the Asia one. I watched like Steve Tan and Ernest Epps, and I got a lot of value. So I might slide to Spain. I might have to pop out to Barcelona. I don't know, but um, let's see a couple more questions, guys. I'm gonna hang out with you for about five more minutes, and then I'm thirsty. I need some water, and I also need to get some food. But thank you guys for joining. Like I really appreciate all of you. So if you have any more questions. Let them out now or forever hold your peace. All right, Dev said, how long should the ad be? Um, 30 seconds to one minute. That You don't want it to be any longer than that just because the customers typically have really short attention spans. Uh, not even customers, just every human in general. So it's important to hit them, share exactly what the product does, share the benefits, and get it while it's hot. Yo, we just passed 100 people viewing this live. This is awesome, guys. Appreciate all of you. I'm about to put this on Instagram so we can get some more people in here. But um, yeah, you guys, are, you guys are killing it. I appreciate you all, and I'm happy to answer the questions. Yeah, 100 people. That's lit. But um, let's see. Do you have any tips on what to put in your ad copy to keep CPC low? So usually what I do in the ad copy to get people to click is that I present an offer to them in the ad copy. So I say, this week only, or today only, it is free shipping and 50% off. So it's just that incentive to get them to come through to your store and actually stand out on the feed like they're gonna miss out if they don't click on it at the moment. But the thing that really makes the cost per click low is the product itself and the, um, the video that you create for the product. <laughs> Abraham said, he really looked high as hell. Bro, no, that's just, that's my eyes. I got naturally low eyes, unfortunately. And the sun is right there. It's just beaming in my face. But that's funny that you say that. All right, um, how do you know if the product is scalable? What should you look for in running ads? So this is a topic that I've gone in depth on in my channel. You should look at the Facebook ads blueprint video that I talked about and uh, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about there. I, I literally give everything away that you need to know. All right. Two more questions. Drop your last questions and I'm gonna answer them in depth. I'm gonna help you guys out and then I'm gonna get out of here. But seriously, appreciate all of you. You guys are the best. It's amazing to have this support and we are just getting started, baby. I'm gonna do more of these YouTube lives most definitely. All right, um, question about email marketing. How often do you email winning subject lines? So I didn't even set up my emails, somebody else did. 
So all I know is that they work <laughs> and I'm, I really haven't explored them all too much. That's not the greatest answer I know, but I'm going to really focus on learning internet mar or email marketing myself so I can teach and help you guys about it because it is a very powerful asset to have in your arsenal. All right, there is the questions that I was looking for. They're flying in now. All right, so let's see. Um, running two stores, do you use one? No, I don't want to answer that question. That's a basic question. I want to find like a, a real hard hitting question so you guys can get it. Can you give us a trust badge? Yeah, I could do that. I'll put it on my uh, Facebook page somewhere. You could download it from there. All right. Um, the last question I'm going to answer from Richard Hanny. Oh, man. Sorry if I butchered your name. Anyways, how do you find the right interest for your product? Great question. So what I like to do when doing interest targeting is go extremely broad single interests and the, the the real strategy that I use is broken down heavily in my Facebook blueprint video but I'm going to share with you now exactly what I would do if I had a product so let's say I was targeting a blender what I like to do is come up with at least three angles that I can target this product around so for a blender one angle we would target is is healthy eaters for example another angle we could target is athletes and another angle we can target is fruit lovers those are really broad but that's exactly what we're looking for and then within those angles you can break down multiple different targetings so for the um, athletes you could target CrossFit you can target gym you can target working out you can target running whatever it may be for fruits, you could target strawberry, banana. Come on now, you, you know what you got to do. And then for the other angle, you can come up with whatever you have to do. So when you're thinking about targeting these products, set up in your mind multiple angles of people that would be interested in it and then come up with various interests within those angles. All right, guys, that's all the questions I have or all the questions that I can answer. I know that there's a lot more questions here and I really wish I could stick around and answer more questions for you guys. But honestly, I, I, I can't say enough how much I appreciate all of you guys. It is very awesome to have you all here and I hope that we can do this live again soon. So if there is anything else that you guys want to know, let me know. But other than that, this is all I have for you guys. I hope you got some value here. And it, it, it seriously means a lot that you guys support me. I'm just getting started on this journey. I'm just getting things going. So we're going to grind. We're going to succeed. And this year is going to be awesome. So appreciate every single one of you. I have a new video that's dropping tonight. And I'm going to be back to dropping three videos a week consistently. So let's get it, guys. Make 2018 your year. Start to crush it. And I'm excited to see all of your successes. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you in my next video. Peace.